and I'm watching this video, it's not even in English, and I see all these people with like no legs in the jungle growing mushrooms. And I'm like, I'm in the largest city in the 10th most populous state. Um, we have internet and we have technology. I, I think I can make this work. Today we drove 20 miles away from the center of Charlotte to visit a man. The mushroom man, that is. His name is Hiram Ramirez, and he has been cultivating mushrooms for restaurants, markets, and his community since 2015. Today, Hiram is going to show us a little bit about what being a mushroom farmer is like. Come on in. Here at Urban Gourmet Farms, we grow mushrooms, lots of mushrooms. Oyster is one of the mushrooms that we grow several hundred pounds of. We also grow several hundred pounds of shiitake. This is a fan favorite. We grow some trumpet. This is trumpet, so it'll probably be ready to harvest, I would say by tomorrow. We do a small run of yellow oyster, which is similar to the gray oyster, maybe a little bit more delicate, a lot prettier. We do lion's mane. We do peel pino, which this is peel pino that it is now pinning in a few days. That would be about this tall and ready to harvest. And we do small runs of mataki. We love mataki, but mataki takes a long time and it takes a lot of space. And we grow over 300 pounds of great oyster mushroom every week. Um, fortunately with oysters, we get more than one harvest per block. For when the blocks come into our room, they will pin. As they start pinning, they will grow 100% in their size in a 24 hour period until they're ready to harvest. After we harvest, the block will just rest in this room and it could be as early as a week later, the second flush comes in. We try not to do more than two flushes just because of space. We have a, we have a lot of space, but we also have a lot of mushrooms. That's Everything crazy. that's new is in our next room. Okay. So some of this stuff has been here as long as six weeks. This has been five weeks, four weeks, three, two, one, next door. We do this six week cycle so we could break down our room and clean the rooms every six weeks. Um, mushrooms aren't hard to grow. Growing 700 pounds a week is challenging. Um, you have to keep it clean. You have to keep your equipment up and running. We grow shiitake now separately. It used to grow with our other stuff, but we wanted to ramp up our production. And right now on a good week, we can grow probably 250 pounds. This room is a lot more wet than our other rooms. The relative humidity in this room is about four degrees higher than the other two rooms. And shiitakes don't need as much fresh air as oysters and trumpets. Um, they could have high CO2 levels in here. These mushrooms are like us. They breathe oxygen and exhale CO2. And if I shut off these fans and brought out my handheld CO2 meter, it'd be like 5,000 parts per million. And if you walk outside, it's like 400. So it's a big, big change. Now these shiitake logs, on average will produce about three quarters of a pound of mushroom per log. Some logs are better than others, some logs don't yield as well, and some logs just grow two gigantic mushrooms that are huge. Well, we need to pump in air every day of the year if it's 80 degrees outside, if it's 10 degrees outside. However, when you're pumping in 95 degree humid July air, it puts a strain on the air conditioner units. Next door I have three and a half tons, and here's only two and a half tons HVAC system, but I chose to grow shiitake in here because I could cut the fans down because shiitake can thrive in a higher CO2 environment. If I was trying to keep this room 60 degrees in the summertime without preconditioning the air, we would run into problems. I mean, this is enough HVAC for probably my home, but shiitake logs as well as other logs actually produce heat as well. So they were, if left, if nothing was on, like no air conditioner, no fans or anything, the blocks, the amount of blocks in this room will probably raise the ambient temperature by like four degrees. I went down a mushroom rabbit hole about 10 years ago. I was very interested in how mushrooms grew because I had no idea. And then the more I learned, the more I wanted to do it. Fast forward to 2015. Um, I took my passion and my hobby and tried to turn it into a business, working with a handful of accounts. And now we work with you know, 20 plus accounts. We work with Freshlist and we have presence at two very good farmers markets in town. 
I started work with Freshless, I think, in 2017. Sounds about right. We've been around. We've been working with them for a while. Um, and the partnership with Freshless has definitely grown. Um, when I look at my wholesale accounts that we deal with and the markets, Freshless is another big chunk taking about 100 or so pounds a week of mushrooms. And seeing that we grow about 700, that is a big chunk of what we do. Another benefit working with Freshless is a one-stop place. I drop off mushrooms in boxes and then they distribute it to all these other accounts and to people's homes. That helps me out because there's some accounts that may only want two pounds of mushrooms in Noda and it doesn't make sense for us to drive from Weddington to Noda for two pounds. So it's been a wonderful partnership and it's been growing significantly and love working with those guys.